In this video, I'm going to show you the leads I generated with a Google Ads campaign over an entire month with a $1,000 budget. And I'll teach you how you can set up the exact same campaign so you can generate leads for renters, buyers, and sellers on your own. These are all the leads I generated, 87 in total, consisting of renters, buyers, and sellers. I ran to ad campaigns with a $500 budget each, using the same configuration, but in different locations, one in San Francisco and the other in New York. The results were quite similar. Leads generated through this campaign are highly motivated. For example, this buyer mentions that they are working with an agent, but are pre-approved. And for some reason, are trying to contact a new agent through Google, which is how they ended up here. This other lead is experiencing the same situation. For some reason, they are looking for a new agent, but are already pre-approved to buy, which significantly speeds up the process. This one is a cash buyer looking for a property to invest in, and ready to make an offer. A fantastic opportunity. Listing leads are also highly motivated, although occasionally you might encounter a curious lead like this one. However, you can't judge based on the intent of just one lead. You need to let your campaign run, because if it is well configured, the targeting will capture the majority of motivated lead. Like this one who wants to sell their house as soon as possible. And renter leads will also be generated, which are often buyer leads whose rental contracts are ending and are looking for a new place to rent. However, they meet the requirements to buy. They just don't know how the process works and are not educated about it. Now, go to the left menu and click on the Forms button. Okay, listen, to run a Google Ads campaign, you need to have a website, but often your website is not optimized to capture leads, and it's not the best place to send traffic from ads. Your main goal is to capture the contact information of these users and, if possible, qualify them as well. So, I recommend using an advertise -up form. This form can be built from scratch and customized to your liking, and it will also be optimized for different screens and devices. This improves the user experience and will reduce your cost per lead. You can create a simple form in less than a minute with artificial intelligence using this prompt that I will leave it below. And just like that, you have an optimized form ready to capture your leads. You can change the text, color, and image, but I'll leave it as is. Just click the publish button and copy the link somewhere, as we will use it later when we create our Google Ads campaign. Now, let's go back to where the contacts are. Click on the contacts button in the left menu. If you use a form, your leads will appear under the form tab. So, just to make a quick summary before we go to Google Ads. The campaign we are going to create is a variation of our Prime Bundle Leads campaign. Its target will be directed at renters, buyers, and seller leads because we are going to capture users who are looking for real estate services in a specific area. For example, when someone searches for real estate agent near me. Alright, we're now in Google Ads and we're going to create our campaign. Click on this button in the menu on the left and select Campaign. I'll try to explain some essential things, but I'll go quickly to make the campaign creation process smooth for you, so I won't go into too much detail at this step. We will start creating a campaign without a goal's guidance. We only want our ads to be shown to people using specific keywords to search for real estate agents or services directly, so the best campaign type is search. It's essential to measure your conversions, because this way Google will be able to optimize your campaign and show your ads to similar audiences who tend to behave like those who have already converted. When your campaign is new, the best way to track conversions is by recording each successful form submission as a conversion. I have some global conversion goals set up and that's why they appear here, but if you don't have any, just click on this button and create a conversion goal. Let's move on. Here we will select website visits. Now we are going to paste the link to our form that we had already created here. 
If you have a specific landing page you want to use, paste it here instead. Maybe in the future, you will create more campaigns for different purposes, so I suggest you give it a unique name that will help you identify it easily. Right now, your campaign doesn't have any data, so my recommendation is to set your bidding strategy to conversions. However, once you have collected a considerable amount of conversions, I suggest enabling a target cost per action. The cost per action means how much a conversion will cost you. This is important for optimizing the campaign because, for example, generating a lead might cost you $10, which is a conversion for you. But when you're running a campaign, most of your leads might cost that amount, while 10% of your leads might cost $20. You don't want to pay $20 for leads, so adjusting a cost per action target will help you avoid overpaying for conversions by setting a maximum target amount you're willing to pay, and Google will help you achieve this. However, if you set this parameter to low, your ads might not show because Google will think it won't be able to generate conversions for you. So you need to use this feature only when you have data on your conversions. Display Network is Google's network of websites that earn money by showing ads. It's useful for retargeting, like bringing people back to your site by showing your ad on other sites they visit. However, it's not helpful in this case because we only want our ad to appear in Google searches. Therefore, we will also disable Google search partners. In locations, I will intentionally select United States, but remember, we are going to run our ads in just one city not the entire country. I will show you how to edit this when a campaign is created. It's very important to select the correct target. Location options allow you to choose to show your ads to people interested in a location or to people physically within that location. My recommendation is the second option because we want to attract people within a city who are looking for real estate services. Language is something you need to consider because many cities have a diverse cultural mix where people, even though they understand English perfectly, have their devices set to another language, especially Spanish. So if you are a real estate agent working with a bilingual audience, you might want to enable another language. However, keep in mind that your ads will be shown in English. I will leave it as the default setting. We won't be using audience segmentation for now, so we won't modify it. Another important aspect to consider is broad match versus keyword match. Broad match will use the keywords we define and create variations based on their general idea. For example, if you search for best realtor in San Francisco, it might trigger ads for someone searching how to sell my house fast, as both searches are related to real estate services. Keyword match, on the other hand, uses the exact keywords as specified and includes them in searches where they appear explicitly. For instance, for the keyword listing agent, your ad will show if someone searches best listing agent near me because the keyword is explicitly included. Broad match, however, gathers data more quickly and is proven to improve performance and cost per conversion for new campaigns. This is because the unique and specific searches generated tend to have a lower cost per click compared to the specific searches targeted by competitors. We will skip this section. While I add the set of keywords we will use, pay attention to what I'm going to explain. Now we're going to define the keywords that will trigger our ads. We'll start with an initial set and let our broad match setup generate variations. It's important to understand that Google Ads campaigns need ongoing optimization once they're created. One of the most crucial ways to optimize a campaign is by regularly reviewing the new variations or search terms generated by the keywords. Initially, Google will add search terms it thinks are relevant to you, but they might not be. If we don't add these irrelevant terms to the negative keywords list, they will continue to trigger ads for similar searches. For example, the keyword real estate agent might generate a search term like real estate agent near me, but it might also generate best broker to join for new agents, which is not relevant to us. We need to mark such terms as negative keywords to ensure our campaign target sellers, buyers, and renters, not other agents. Now we are going to create our ad. Display Path is a fictitious URL that Google allows us to create so we can be creative. 
Instead of showing the final URL, which might not be optimized for an ad, will display something much more attractive and related to this ad. Headlines can be a mix of your own copy or call to action and the keywords you set up. One of the factors that increases your ad strength is using the keywords within the headlines. Ad strength influences how Google shows your ads. If Google believes your ad has the necessary quality, it will show it more. If not, it will show your competitors ad more often. Let's create a description that matches the ad as well. You can copy this one. It works well. Let's add more headlines to include more keywords and increase our ad strength. We have finished with our ad. Click next to continue. Now we are going to select the daily budget for this campaign. It's really important to understand that the budget you set needs to be enough for Google to show your ad. For now, we will assign a daily budget of $25. Google ads work with a bidding system, which means the cost per click depends on how much other people in your area are willing to pay. For example, if you're running ads in a place where the average property costs a million dollars, the cost per click will be higher than in a place where properties cost $300,000. This is because competitors in high value areas are willing to pay more to get those leads since their commission will be higher. So, in areas where houses are more expensive, you'll need a bigger budget. Also, remember that new campaigns start slowly. This is because Google needs time to learn and figure out the best audience for your ad. During this learning phase, Google will use some of your budget to gather data. If your budget is too low, this process will take longer. Keep these things in mind when setting your campaign budget. Done! Our campaign has been created. Now I'm going to show you how to edit the location. When you add a location to your campaign, keep in mind that this type of ad falls under a special category called housing. These categories limit the segmentation, so you can't just choose a zip code, you have to choose a radius instead. Otherwise, your ads might start running, but could be stopped within a few days, and Google will send you a notification. So, it's better to configure it correctly from the start. So we are going to select a radius and adjust the area where we want to display our campaign. A 10-mile radius is perfect for running our ad in San Francisco. Remember, if you run your ad in a very large area that covers other territories or cities, you need to modify your ad because we have included the city name in the copy. If you show your ads in another city, users might not feel identified. Therefore, the click-through rate of your ad may be affected, and this can increase your cost per click. There is a way to make these location names dynamic, but we will leave that for a more advanced tutorial. Now, let's set up conversions. In the left menu, click on Goals and then on Summary. Now, pay attention because this part gets more technical and is the most crucial step for optimizing your ads so Google can show them to audiences that are more likely to interact positively. I'm talking about setting up conversions. Think of it this way, if you don't set up conversions, your ads will still run and you'll initially receive traffic. However, Google won't know which keywords, locations, times, ages, and user behaviors are ideal for a conversion, which, in your case, is lead generation. Consequently, Google won't be able to create similar audiences to the leads generated, and your cost per lead won't be optimized, causing you to waste money on lead generation efforts. Click here to create a new conversion action. Let's select the first option. So for this example, we will use the advertise of domain, and this is a fictitious URL that does not exist. I am using it just for this example to be able to create the conversion action. Therefore, what will happen now is that it won't find an existing configuration and will allow you to create one. You should enter your own domain as a reference.
Now we will click here and manually create a conversion action. In Goal and Action Optimization, we will select the category Submit Lead Form. Everything else will remain as default. Give it a unique name that is relevant for identification since you might create more conversion actions in the future. In Value, we will ensure to select the first option. In Count, we will select the second option, which is also recommended for leads and form submissions. Everything else will remain as default. Now click on Save and continue to proceed to the next step. The next step is divided into two tasks. First, you need to install or verify if Google Tag is already installed on your website. If it's not installed, you will see a button to set it up. It's just a piece of code that you need to copy and place somewhere on your website where it will always load from any URL. If you don't know how to do this, I recommend contacting your hosting support or sending the instructions to a coworker for assistance. We are back and have installed our Google tag on our website. Now we will continue with the second task, which is to set up our event snippet. This is another piece of code, but its function is to trigger the conversion event when it occurs and notify Google. I recommend placing this snippet on a page within your website that is specifically for redirecting leads once they have been captured. The sole purpose of this page should be to confirm the conversion, like a thank you page, for example. Once we have inserted the event snippet on our thank you page, we return to advertise it to configure the form's redirection after submission. This ensures that the lead is redirected to the thank you page and the conversion is recorded. Now we will add our thank you page link. You can now start generating leads on your own. As you can see, you can also assign a marketing sequence to this form. This allows you to follow up with your leads by automatically sending emails and SMS messages every time you generate a lead. To do this, you need to have an active subscription with Advertisip. In an upcoming video, I will teach you how to automate your follow-up and how to automatically trigger a conversation with the leads you generate using a chat bot and a real phone number so it can qualify your leads and schedule appointments for you on autopilot. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Subscribe to receive notifications when we upload new videos like this one.